Marty. Thank you. 742. This Saturday, comedian Gaspari Randazzo will be in town to perform at Comedy at the Carlson. Sure will. And this morning, we're getting a chance to chat with him before he takes the stage. We are joined now by Gaspari from his day job as a teacher in New York City. Good morning. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to, to speak with us. Good morning, guys. Have everything. I actually, um, today I'm teaching about nights and I dress up like whatever I'm teaching and I completely <laughs> forgot that I'd be doing this. So here I am. I love so, it. So great. let me ask, are you a history teacher then? Oh no, I teach math. No, I'm just, yeah, of course I teach history. <laughs> That was kind of a dumb question. Oh, okay. It was. It was. No, but you I never know. You never know. It's very true. It's you a know, great it's, costume. It's about nights. So, but yeah, so I, I'm a teacher in the day. I do stand up comedy usually on the weekends and the summer. And sometimes I take off during the week and I do shows. Um, but yeah, so I will be at the Carlson this weekend. There's two shows. The first one is sold out at seven o'clock. The second one still has some tickets left at 9 o'clock. That's very exciting. I wonder, um, is it difficult to kind of put on the teacher hat when you need to and kind of, you Get know, serious. Yeah, get serious with the kids, or do you have a pretty good relationship with them and you guys can just kind of be, you know, laid back a little bit? Yeah, I'm, it's hard for me to be serious ever, so. <laughs> and also, I'm about to stand in front of 150 kids dressed like this, so they kind of know the deal already. Um, I, you know, it's hard. It's but being a comedian is similar to being a teacher. You're just putting on a show. When you're a comedian, you do it for an hour. When you're a teacher, you do it five times, forty-five minutes each. So similar lifestyle. When in life did you realize that uh, you were a funny person and wanted to pursue this as as a career? Uh, I guess when I, when I was young, people always told me I should go and do try stand-up comedy and do it. But I never thought to do it. And then one day I was an extra on a movie set just for fun. And someone was like, hey, man, you're pretty funny. Why don't you try doing an open mic? And I was like, you know what? I, I was like 24 at the time, 25. And I was like, I should. So I went, I tried it, and here I am now. Tell us what that process was like going from hosting one open mic night, working your way up, and now having sold out shows. Yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty crazy to think, like, Sometimes I think two years ago, I couldn't even get four people to come to a show, like in my hometown of Staten Island. It was hard for me to drag four friends out. And now I'm doing shows across the whole country and they're selling out and people are coming from all over. It's really, it's like kind of surreal. It doesn't feel real. And then I come back to work on Monday mornings and I'm, um, you know, begging the lunch lady for extra mozzarella sticks. So <laughs> it's a crazy like juxtaposition of worlds and life. For me uh, listen the mozzarella sticks though they they're totally worth the begging they, they are talk to us talk to us if you will about the netflix show the trust yes yeah, so i was just on a uh, netflix show that aired january 10th it came out it's called the trust um it was uh it was an interesting experience it's a brand new show it's similar to the mole or big brother or traders or any of those type of shows they put 11 people in a house and tell each other, hey, you don't have to vote each other out, but if you want, you can, and there's a big prize at the end. You could share it or you could eliminate each other. And it just was all mental social games to test each other's ability to trust one another. Did you and it was fun. I was only there, I think, to make jokes. I don't know. Everyone else seemed very <laughs> curious. And I was just having a good time. I was on an island for a month. I mean, there was nothing really bad about it for me. I was gonna say, do you did you get some ammunition for your next show from being on the trust? On the internet, all told me that my hairline is disappearing. So you know, I get to hear that every day. You know, in the comments about how people like when they do overhead camera angles, so that you could see where my hairline is receding. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so mean. <laughs> yeah, it's the people on the internet like to tell me. Well, it's it's but, mean, but it it sounds a, a little familiar, does it not? I, 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 for you, maybe. Well, yeah, I, listen, I, I, I've received some bad hair comments, okay? Yeah, I guess it's part, it's the nature of the beast, so it's all right. I can live with that. They also told me, I remind them of 
um, Alan from the Barbie movies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Listen, Alan. Alan was Ken's best friend. He's a good no, guy. No, he was also kind of the, the, the nerdy one, but that's all right. He was he was the good guy. Yeah, he was he a good was, human yeah. being. Yeah, and good that's, human being. That's what matters oh, in the end. Well, guys, thank you so much for your time today. Best of luck for those who want to come and see the show that is not sold out because they're unable to do that. Um, when and where, how do people get tickets? Uh, it's at Comedy at the Carlson this Saturday on February 10th. It's at 9 o'clock. You can get tickets at the Carlson's website, Comedy at the Carlson, or you can go to my Instagram uh, or my website, guestbrandazzo.com, or my Instagram, standuprandazzo. Everything links everything to everything awesome thank you so much for your time <laughs> tell the kids at ps 182 we said hello thank you have a good day you, you do the too. same it is 7